Throughout history, many people have felt that they were reincarnation of kings, deities, or just other random people. There are many documented occasions of people claiming to remember a past life in great detail or have been convinced by psychics that they were actually reincarnated. While reincarnation is a legitimate belief in Buddhist religion, most Westerners are not easily convinced that reincarnation is a real thing. There is always the exception, though, as we have all seen the TV talk shows with a guest claiming to have been someone else in a previous life. A young boy appeared on Oprah and claimed to have been killed in the Civil War. Inside Edition had a story of a young baseball prodigy that was believed to have been Lou Gehrig in a past life. Dr. Phil had a guest that believed she was the reincarnation of Pocahontas, and she was actually related to Pocahontas. Then we have people who have actually believed they were God. This dips a little more than a toe in the crazy pool and goes beyond reincarnation to me. These people have all believed that they were of divine origin or the son of God himself. Afro Mohaben claimed to be the king of the sky, as well as claiming to be the reincarnation of Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, and Shiva. He was informed this by an angel that visited him twice in his life. Wayne Bent, a convicted sex offender and leader of the Lord of Our Righteous Church of New Mexico, claims to have been informed by God himself that he is in fact the Messiah. He was also told to sleep with seven virgins, which ended up being young daughters from his church. David Shaler, an ex-spy, believed he was, was the reincarnation of Christ. He became a voice in the truther movement and was deep in the conspiracy theories. Oh, he also spends part of his time living as a woman and squatting in a 17th century farmhouse. And who can't forget Marshall Applewhite? He was the crazy man that wanted everyone to leave the planet Earth before it was recycled. He was the leader of Heaven's Gate and convinced a large number of people to commit suicide in order to catch a spacecraft that traveled the Hale-Bob comet. Now, celebrities have also been on the reincarnation bandwagon for quite some time. Among those that believed were Mark Twain, Walt Whitman, Henry Ford, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Some celebrities have taken it one step further, though. Napoleon believed he was Charlemagne. George S. Patton believed he was reborn many times and, and always as a soldier, such as how Patton fought as a Greek soldier against the Persian Cyrus, as a Roman legionnaire, as a medieval warrior, a sailor on a warship, and Patton even remembered serving under Napoleon as a general. The artist Salvador Dali was told by his parents that he was the reincarnation of his brother, also named Salvador. Dali also claimed to have memories of being St. John of the Cross. Sylvester Stallone believes he was the victim of the French Revolution. Tina Turner was informed by a psychic that she was actually the reincarnation of Queen Hatshepsut. After a visit to Egypt, Turner felt a strong connection to the land and even had lyrics in a song that alluded to her reincarnation. Stevie Nicks was a monk. She did a lot of drugs and we can probably just chalk it up to that. John Lennon, almost the same here, believed he was a reborn Jesus Christ and Napoleon. Phil Collins was a defender at the Alamo. This one kind of surprised me. Collins had the largest collection of artifacts from the battle and donated it to the Alamo. He strongly believed that he was a fighter at the Alamo. Now let's get into something that has boggled my mind in my hometown for years now. Meet Harold Laster a.k.a. Father Laster, a.k.a. Father Jesus. Father Laster, Father Jesus, claims to be the CEO of the Saints of the Most High, which is a tax-exempt church founded in his residential home near downtown Gulfport, Mississippi. Now, Harold Laster seems to have come from a pretty normal but religious family. His father was an actual minister for many years before passing away. It's not clear exactly when Harold Laster came to Gulfport or became Father Laster. However, I have lived in the area for a long time and have always noticed the odd little house downtown that had many really weird yard ornaments and usually have a couple of Rolls Royce or Ferrari kit cars parked in front of the home. They were clearly not the real deal. I had even spotted a man in a white robe hand painting white walls onto the Rolls Royce. If it's a real Rolls Royce, why are you fucking painting the white walls on it? As the years go on, the man is seen more and more in the public with his white robe and now sporting a gold crown, a badge of some sort, and an empty shoulder holster for a weapon. Now people are wondering, who in the hell is this character? Passing by the home, you notice more people starting to hang out and even seemingly doing the housework for this man. I mean, someone has to keep that fresh paint on the tires of that kit car. Soon, even strange TV commercials start appearing on local TV for a church called Saints of the Most High, and the Facebook posts start popping up from people wanting to know what this craziness is. You know, God has really blessed us, and I, 
I want everybody to know when I when the, when I turn 80 years old, I want to see these tapes to see that I had the most beautiful women that God ever made, better than King Solomon and all the earth. So people of the interwebs, being the people of the interwebs, did their digging around to see who this guy is. Well, a whole lot of info will pop up in a quick Google search for Father Laster, and it does not disappoint. Some are articles, and some are his YouTube channel, Facebook page, church page, as well as some underground videos of pornographic nature and endless photos that will make you question exactly who is following this man as a religious leader. Laster has been known to tell people he is the second coming of Christ, as well as being the reincarnation of the like of Nebuchadnezzar, the same Nebuchadnezzar that Saddam Hussein believed he was a direct descendant of and wanted to rebuild his legacy. Many videos can be found and most contain women bowing down to his feet and kissing his inner thighs while he is petting them like dogs. He will cut scenes together where he is actually petting a dog and then switch back to him petting the woman. You can look at some pictures he posts, and if you zoom in, you can see some very questionable ha photos hanging on his walls. Among, among other findings, you will see where Laster wanted to rent out a room in his home slash church. For the low price of $110 a month, you could live in a supposed $1.5 million home. Okay, let's get real here. There isn't a $1.5 million home in that neighborhood. I know it really well, and that house he lives in is nowhere near that value. Evidently, it started also started a recording studio in another town some years ago, and it failed. The studio, it was named 22nd Century Motown. Not original. Don't be angry. You'll also find where he has tried to sue almost every nearby city, insurance company, business, and citizen. Every case was either thrown out of, thrown out of court or dismissed without a trial. As Laster is always seen wearing a badge of some sort, no one really knows what it is from. Most speculate that it is a badge of a bondsman and is not known if he was ever a bondsman at all. Alongside being in the public with his empty weapon holster, he can be seen in many videos waving guns around while supposedly singing about the Lord. Honestly, in all of his videos, you can't understand a damn word he's singing. Other search results are not surprising. Arrest. Yes, the holy man has a history of being arrested for things such as disorderly conduct, public drunkenness, telephone harassment, domestic violence, waving, waving a firearm in public. But hey, at least he was arrested wearing that sweet robe and gold crown. A few years ago, Laster decided he was ready to take his church to the next level. He, he went to the city with a plan to build a state-of-the-art church for him and his follower, followers to worship and live in. Believing the city would pretty much just give him the property he wanted and give him the grants to build said church, a meeting was set. It did not go as planned. Many of the citizens showed up to voice their discontent for the church run by Father Laster in their community. Councilwoman Ella Holmes Hines said, I'm aware that they were very disturbed, she said. The citizens are very disturbed, speaking of the local citizens. Everyone had seen the videos posted by Laster and weren't pleased with him in the white linen robe with what appeared to be an erection underneath. Father Jesus said a medical problem caused the erection. Eventually, Laster was denied of his new church. At the meeting, when, he, when the announcement was made, there was a lady there handing out packets with information on Father Laster. The packet contained all of his past arrest and questionable behavior. Then it was revealed that Laster's plans did not meet city code. The plans were not even drawn up by a professional contractor. That's an automatic denial from the city alone. As of recently, Father Jesus signs are being spotted all around town. They are on crude frames and very unprofessional graphics printed on vinyl. One of his Rolls Royce caught on fire and was totaled, and none of the other kit cars have been seen in front of the home. This makes me think that they weren't his anyways and they were barred for his music videos. So that's the story as of now for Father Laster slash Father Jesus. Let me know if you have anything similar in your hometown and uh, what kind of craziness is, the, you know, it's, it's just crazy. But anyways, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and hit the like button if you would. Subscribe, hit the bell, and all that other crummy YouTuber stuff. I'll see you guys next time.